In this video, we will cover connecting to target replication sites. Target replication sites are of two types. One is the vCenter vSphere replication server site as well as cloud sites. So we have the ability to replicate out to the cloud. An example of that is vCloud Air disaster recovery. So we are back again at the VMware vSphere web client. We are in the vCenter inventory lists and we have two vCenters here. One is the 220 vCenter which is our primary vCenter and we have the 221 vCenter which is at our branch site number two. These are working in linked mode. The 220 vCenter is actually running the platform services controller embedded and when I installed vCenter server on 221 I only installed vCenter server not the platform services controller. The platform services controller that's embedded in 220 at the, the home site at headquarters is actually serving the SSO domain called site.local. You can see it here site.local. So site.local is SSO domain for the platform services controller that's embedded in 220. vCenter Server 221 is running in linked mode. It does not have its own dedicated platform services controller. It is connected to the same platform services controller that's embedded in 220 and that's why they're working here in linked mode and it also is being served from there as site.local. Now why did we go into this? It's because it's a you will see when we look at the target sites uh, you will see that from one perspective the uh, target site is looked upon as local which means basically uh, being in the same domain and uh, versus being external uh, which uh, would be in a different domain and it's kind of interesting the way it, it all uh, turns out. Now, moving forward to uh, targets. So what we see at this point in time is I'm looking at uh, 221. So this is our branch uh, site, uh, site number two branch site. And when I look at related objects in virtual machines, I see I'm running that vCenter there. We installed the replication appliance and we installed the replication server. Now, when I look at uh, summary, I see that vSphere replication is up and running. However, there are no target sites for this vCenter server and that is because we have not set up any. When I look at 220, our headquarters, you will see that that actually is connected to a target site which is our branch 3 which is has the vCenter 223. Back to 221. See what it looks like. No incoming replications, no outgoing replications. We look at manage. There are no target sites. So we are at the branch, branch 2 and let us now add a target site not a cloud provider target site but a target site that's vCenter based within our own environment. I click on that and it's interesting connect to local site and it already tells me that there is a vCenter server that it has to uh, connect to and it knows it's not connected to anything so 220 is the one that actually comes up and what I want to do is uh, basically say okay and it is going to go through its motions. After a minute or so when we come back, we see that a new target site has been added. So for this branch office site 221, it is now linked to and connected to the status is connected. It's linked to the main vCenter or a headquarters vCenter 220 and it's connected to the uh, vSphere replication appliance that's running out there at that same address uh, 70. Now note that in this case, I did not have to provide any credentials. So when I added the site, it knew where it was and basically just went ahead and added it. And the reason why I did not have to provide any uh, credentials is uh, because we are working here in linked mode and we are sharing the same platform services controller. So it's single sign on all the way. Now let us go to our headquarters site and see what the situation looks like from there. I click on the headquarters site and now I see that the target sites have changed. The target initially we only had the branch 3 target site and now we see that we have the branch 2 target site uh, as well at the address of 75 which is the main vSphere replication appliance address. So the headquarters site is now connected to our two branches. Branch 3 at 223 with an appliance address of 71 and branch 2 at address 221 with a replication appliance address of 75. Now let's go over to the other side 
and to the branches and see whether we can configure replication among them. Now, of course, uh, one would not do that in real life because uh, in all probability, you will either be replicating from a branch to headquarters or from a branch to a disaster recovery site, right? I mean, those are the only two likely options. You're unlikely to be replicating from branch to branch. Anyways, we can take a look at replicating from branch to branch by seeing if we can connect 221 and 223 together for replication. So I go to my branch 2 and the only target right now is headquarters. I click on connect to a remote site because there are no other local sites to connect to. The platform services controller address for branch 3 is 192.168.0.223. It is running with an embedded platform services controller. Administrator at site 3 in its own SSO domain. After logging in, it tells us what vCenter server is available with that platform services controller. And this is the embedded platform services controller for this uh, vCenter as we know. And we click OK. And it's going to go through its configurations. And it comes back after a minute or so. And now we have a second target that is available. So branch 2 is now connected also to branch 3. And of course, as you know, that's the uh, address of the replication appliance there. Now let's go to branch 3 and see what it looks like from there. This is branch 3. We look at the target sites. It's interesting that it, it shows only one site uh, so far. Let's uh, click on this and see if this changes. It still has one site. Let's look at manage. And here it uh, shows that we are not authenticated to branch 2. So what we have to do is to authenticate ourselves to branch 2. I right click on that. I click on reconnect and then it uh, it asks me to key in the credentials to connect to the platform services controller for branch 2. Remember the platform services controller for uh, branch 2 is at 220 which is the main vCenter at headquarters. So the vCenter server address is 221 which is the branch 2 vCenter but it is in the same SSO domain as the uh, 220 server. So that's where the platform services controller is shared but the vCenter server address is that of branch 2. Keying in the credentials to the platform services controller which is site.local which is the headquarters SSO domain. And uh, there we are. It uh, has now connected to uh, 220 also or rather it was already connected to 20 now it is also connected to uh, 221. So we have that and we can go back to a summary and it now shows us the two uh, target sites. So that's how one creates and connects target sites after the replication appliances have been set up. In this case, we created a closed loop. We went from our headquarters site to the linked mode server at branch 2 and created targets there. And then we also created uh, targets between the two branches, branch 2 and branch 3 as well. And we saw how in, in some cases one had to enter credentials when you were not part of the same SSO domain. And in some cases where we were part of the same SSO domain or the two source and targets were part of the same SSO domain, there was no need to enter credentials, which is exactly how SSO should work anyway. So I'm now connected to my VMware vCloud Air account. And the reason I'm here is because I want to show you the kind of information that you need to be able to connect your replication in your own premise on premise data center to a cloud based disaster recovery environment. Now, I only have the subscription to the virtual private cloud on demand. There is a subscription for disaster recovery in vCloud Air that can be obtained from VMware and that specific information is needed. But I can give you a flavor for what kind of information is that would be needed. After this, we're going to go back into our vSphere client and uh, take a look at how we would connect to a target that's out in the cloud. So I'm looking at one of my service IDs. Part of my private cloud on demand is in the US Virginia region or data center that's part of vCloud Air. And uh, I have two data centers there. In vCloud Air language or terminology, it's called virtual data centers, which is VDC. 
So just think of them as uh, data centers with a certain resource pool that's available to you. So I created a, a packed pub a disaster recovery uh, site for application. Uh, however, because I don't have the subscription for disaster recovery, it's not going to work exactly like it, it, would, it would. But what's important to show here is by clicking on this, you will be looking at the API endpoints for vCloud Director and more importantly, an organization name. When you subscribe to a disaster recovery account, you will be given an endpoint or a URL by VMware to connect to for disaster recovery. You will also be given an organization name to connect to for disaster recovery. So just keeping that in mind, we're going to switch back to our, we'll go to our 220 data center or rather 220 vCenter server because that is our headquarters server because and that because more, more than likely we are going to replicate from there so the target sites have already been set up to the branches and now we click on this icon which connects us to a cloud provider to configure replications when I click on that I need a cloud provider address and the cloud provider address would look something like this so I do a copy and I do a control V then an organization name again the same thing I go to vCloud Air I copy this and I come back to my client and I do a control V to paste it back in. Credentials would be the credentials that you are given for your disaster recovery account and then there will be a, a password there as well. Now, now of course this is an administration set of credentials but if you want to use a different account for system monitoring which would have lower level of privileges then you would click on this and you would be able to do system monitoring with a lower level of privileges to the cloud rather than using administrative privileges which is obviously a good thing. Now of course in this case since I am not set up for disaster recovery when I click next do that and try next again it's authenticating and, and, and basically it's saying I cannot validate the user credentials and so on because obviously these credentials are uh, not correct. I will just the heck of it uh, key in my real credentials for my account and see if the message changes anyway. We seem to have got gotten a lot further. It uh, actually logged us in, but it did not give us the name of a virtual uh, data center that I could then uh, utilize for uh, disaster recovery. So while I was able to log on, I don't have the disaster recovery subscription. Uh, if you had one, then you would be able to uh, specify the virtual uh, data center because that would actually show up here. And um, then the setting of targets would be exactly the same. You know, you would just uh, probably actually don't even need the credentials at that point in time because uh, you already have uh, entered your credentials. And then everything would work in exactly the same way uh, in, in terms of being able to replicate uh, to the cloud and then uh, recovering uh, from the cloud as well, which we will see when we look at the section on recovery. So we've covered in extensive detail how to uh, configure a target that's in the cloud and how to configure targets that are in our company enterprise uh, environment. Uh, we've configured uh, targets from our headquarters sites to branch sites and between branch sites as well. And we are going to proceed further with uh, looking at how to actually configure replications. Since we have now created target sites, we are now in a position to create replication jobs which is the subject of the next video. I look forward to seeing you there.